Hey there viewers and welcome back to the South Main Auto Channel. So we've got this 01 Chevrolet 1500 here. It's got the 5.3 liter in it. Every light in the dash is on. Uh, we're asked to take a look at the check engine light. He's trying to get it through for inspection. Uh, he's had it at another shop. They recommended he came here. Uh, they already shot the parts cannon at it, I guess. Uh, from what the guy told me, it has misfire codes and it has lean codes in it. And they've done, you know, the plugs and wires thing and uh, hosed everything with brake clean, I guess. I uh, can't seem to make heads or tails of it. So I told him drop it off and leave it overnight so we can check it when it's cold. If there is a lean code in it, uh, that's always best to do, particularly on these GMs that are, have, you know, the notorious uh, intake manifold gasket leak. I've already done videos on that. Uh, so hopefully this isn't the same thing, but if it is, whatever. Uh, I'll put a link to that video. It was, it was probably some of the, the OG SMA videos way back in the day. Um, I, we did that one, so I can't uh, guarantee the content or the quality. I don't know. But uh, I'll put a link to that. So let's check this out, see if he's right, see what codes it has in it, and we'll take it from there. So we've got our vehicle information entered here. Today's Halloween. How scary. We'll uh, grab the grab the codes here. I'm pretty sure I got the key on. Double check. Yep, left the key on. Truck is cold. Uh, so we'll grab the codes out of this little fella. Sometimes this takes a, a little bit of time to gather codes here. We'll see what we come up with. Uh, so let's see, 171, 174, so those are definitely in codes. And then a PO300, misfire code. So he is right. Um, so we can look at that and see. Uh, so those are pending codes, mill codes, and history codes. So right now the engine light is on because of the uh, lean on both banks not uncommon to see a misfire code associated with uh, lean codes um, let's see I don't can, can we get to the that's the share button still getting used to use this tool I think it's one thing I don't like about it to read the freeze frame data I think you got to back back out and go back into uh, the trouble code portion because I think I think it gives you the option right in the beginning yeah so our failure record is going to be our freeze frame. Uh, we'll just pick one of the lean codes. We'll see what temperature. Oh, I got our temperature right there. So that's kind of interesting. 145 degrees. That's pretty warm. Usually when these intakes leak, usually they're stone cold. But we can see definitely was compensating. Uh, we can see our fuel trims are really high long term. Our short term is starting to kind of cut back there. So it puts our total trim less than 10. Um, he was cruising down the road. Okay, so that's that's pretty interesting. Let's grab a different, let's look at the PO300 failure record. Again, 145 degrees. It's probably all happening at the same time. Well, no, we get, it's not, because look at the um, look look at those fuel trims. So that sucker was running crazy lean at that point. 50%? I didn't even know if, I didn't know your short term can go as high as 50. So that was compensating for a serious lean condition. Vehicle wasn't moving. What was the engine RPM? We got we got that lit pit anywhere. Oh yeah, right there, 525. So that's probably lower normal. It's probably running quite rough at that point. Okay, so the vehicle is stationary, and let's look at the other failure record here. Again, long terms pegged out, 156 degrees. So it's always good, you know, definitely this is a problem, like if you clear your code, you lose all this data. And this is a little snapshot as to when the uh, event occurred. We can see here the engine's almost fully warmed, 160. And the fuel trim is still, you know, excessively high. And it's cruising down the road. All right. So definitely has a lean condition. Uh, misfire, you know, we can't verify. Uh, we can go back in. I don't know why I must have just got click happy. We can go back in. We'll look at, uh, 
look at our data the engine should be stone cold I just started up just enough to get it inside here so let's uh, we'll pop in here we'll look at some data and then I think the best thing to do before we get uh, too far would be to just do a smoke test on it let's just see what our temperature is right now intake air is 61 engine coolant temps 54 so the engine stone cold this it's 61 degrees in a shot so let's do that let's uh, let's do a smoke test on it first uh, verify there is or isn't vacuum leaks they claim there isn't but I never uh, I never trust anybody's data you know especially when I don't know the source uh, but we can see I don't know if you guys can see or not probably not it looks like the uh, intake manifold gaskets have had a pretty healthy dose of some sort of cleaner. You can see around all the intake ports it is super clean. So that's usually a telltale sign that they actually were, you know, spraying it with carb cleaner or uh, you know brake clean or something like that. Some kind of some kind of solvent to you know try to isolate a, a leak. Of course, if the leak's under the intake, that's a little more difficult to get to. Um, I usually like just give them visual inspection. There's not many vacuum hoses on these. You've got the brake booster. Uh, of course, you've got you know a fuel pressure regulator, and then you cannot neglect the purge solenoid, which is under the cover there. Uh, now, people often think that the purge solenoid will only make them run rich. Uh, they will intermit or initially until the canister is cleared, and then it will go into a a lean code. Um, that's not uncommon. So particularly if you get a vehicle in that has it rich codes and lean codes, always be suspicious of the purge solenoid. But usually if they're stuck open, they'll have other complaints like a hard start after you know a refill. But we can see it's got new new wires and stuff on it there. So anyhow, uh, let's hook up the smoke machine and see what we've got. All right, so I'll show you a little, little trick my grandmother taught me. Um, so we're interested in not only vacuum leaks, but pirate air, or uh, false air, or unmetered air, um, which I guess essentially is what a vacuum leak is. So anything, you know, in this tube too, so don't discount uh, the tube that goes between the mass airflow sensor and the engine, which it's a little bit loose, but. So the easiest way to do this, I just take a bag, you know, to make sure it's got no holes in it, like that hole right there. So take a bag, loosen up your clamp, Pull this little fella down over the front of the airflow meter. Stick that back on there. We'll tighten that back up, and then what we'll do for a vacuum source, uh, I like to leave the brake booster hooked up because if the diaphragm was bad inside the brake booster, usually you get a hard pedal complaint, but uh, that could also leak. Um, of course, that has a chuck valve on it, so disregard anything I just told you. But what we'll do is we'll go into the fuel pressure regulator hose uh, because I'm hooking that, it's not going to make a difference. So we'll hook up their pressurized system, uh, verify that we don't have any leaks, and then we'll take our diagnosis from there. Uh, I've got a smoke that hooked up. Wait till we start uh, fogging out some good smoke here. Sometimes this takes a little bit to get warmed up. Particularly if the uh, battery in the vehicle is low. I don't know if the little glow plug in there it doesn't heat up well, but there we go. Now we got some smoke. I'm going to just stick that right in the end there. Grab a flashlight, whatever I did with that. I have no idea how flashlights can disappear so fast. See any smoke there. Oh, we got some smoke starting down there. Move you guys here. Sometimes the EGR valves will leak just a little bit. Oh, that's a lot of bit. Oh yeah, that's excessive smoke. Well, I was mentioning sometimes the EGR valves will leak a little bit out of the pinnel. You know, like up through the shaft just a little bit. But this is uh that's what I'm going to say is excessive. I thought they said they checked for vacuum leaks. Anyhow, 
So on this EGR, you've got the tube going to the exhaust manifold, which theoretically it should not be leaking out of. But you also have the one there that goes to the intake manifold. This one right here with the uh, protective sleeve on it. Not uncommon to see those cracked. That is plummeting the smoke. Plumes of smoke. I say we better get a mirror because I can't uh, I can't see it there. You guys can see it though. <sighs> oh yeah. I believe I'm gonna pull back that insulation, but it appears to definitely be leaking out of that uh, intake tube. It's either broke. It's gotta be broke. Holy smokes. So we've got our mirror set up there. That's where you guys can see it. Everything's in the way. Focus, baby. There she is. Look at that giant hole. I put that insulation back. We kicked the old smoker on here. There she is. She's puffing out of there pretty good. I'll just shut that back off. Pretty easy to see now. It's just got a hole corroded right through it. You know, smoke's blowing right out of it. So that's a pretty massive vacuum leak. I would say. So easy fix anyways. Uh, we need to get this EGR tube. If I remember right it comes with the whole pedestal and everything. The downside to it is you have to get those bolts out of the uh, exhaust manifold. Right there. They're not looking too bad. We'll just heat them up a little bit and uh, they should come out hopefully. We'll make sure we get new ones. So order the tube. A couple gaskets. Gasket there. EGR gasket. And then you know the o-ring or whatever it is where it goes in the intake but all right well that's it guys uh so yeah we could have figured this out other ways um you know we could have we could have done our own spraying with with the good stuff for sure i know that would have made everybody happy um but when i get a chevy in or most cars in for lean codes if the customer knows it's a lean code i always have them leave it uh overnight to get cold uh, simply because you know more often than not vacuum leaks will show up better when the engine's cold particularly if it's intake leak I think we've done some videos on uh, the Toyotas you know the 1.8s like in the Matrix and the Vibes and the Corollas and stuff real notorious vacuum leaks goes right away as soon as the engine warms up and that's that's how a lot of these do with plastic intakes metal heads or well aluminum heads of course heads are metal um, but you get the gist things warm up they tighten up and uh, all that business but this is pretty easy looks like we can't have that tube for a couple days so there won't be a repair video on it but it's essentially just nuts and bolts it's just you know a couple bolts in the pedestal two in the manifold and then just one on the intake of course that'll take right care of this guy's problem i uh, did not see it leaking anywhere else out of the intake of course can't really build very good pressure uh, but being that they sprayed it down and hopefully they were monitoring fuel trims while they did it you know i don't know i don't know why they couldn't find that leak it's neither here nor there i guess we're just here to fix them so that's that guys uh any questions comments concerns put them in the comment box below and just remember viewers if i can do it you can do it thanks for watching hey right, guys so we're back on the chevy truck i know we never left right uh so here's the tube i took it off and you can see right through it uh it's obviously got a pretty pretty big hole and of course i uh, open it up a little bit, but you can see this thing's pretty pretty well wasted. Uh, when I took it off, there was evidence of silicone all around uh, this end where it goes into the intake manifold. So obviously somebody's had it off at some point, probably to do uh, an intake gasket or something. Uh, without pulling this whole pedestal and taking it out, you, you know, you just pull the tube back, and that's probably what happened. You know, it could have been you know really weak there at some point, and that just you know helped it along, so to speak. Uh, the bolts down in the head or in the manifold there were real pisser, you know, heating them things up to get them out. They came out real slow and hard all the way to the end. I didn't have a chance to record that. It's just way too busy. Uh, but what I want to do is take, um, I haven't had the truck running yet, is we should be able to start it up and see our fuel trim correction being made uh, on the scan tool because technically, and I haven't looked to verify this, but the uh, long-term fuel trim should be really high and stuck, you know, stuck high to compensate for that huge leak. So now we should see a rapid change in the short-term fuel trim to get our total fuel trim back to zero. It's kind of a, you know, without clearing the codes, it's kind of a way to 100% verify your repair. You know, did I fix it all? Didn't I? We still got more problems. Uh, so that's what we're going to see right now.
There's our new tube in there, all shiny. I don't know if you guys can see it down there on the manifold. Uh, it's got a little different uh, heat shield on it this time, or heat tape, or whatever, you know, that fiberglass insulation they put on it. But uh, like I said, it does come with a whole whole pedestal and stuff, as you've seen. So everything went pretty pretty smooth. Could have been worse. So we got the Varus fired up. The cool thing with that new 16.4 uh, update when you plug in a vehicle, uh, it auto IDs it. So that's pretty cool. You just turn the key on and it automatically loaded it. So we'll pull up some engine data here. And we won't clear the code so our fuel trim should still be really crappy. Yeah, okay, so we got fuel trims there. We'll get a custom data list here. We'll just look at fuel trims, all we want to look at. Yep, so our long terms are high. Let's pull these up in graphs, I guess. All right, so short terms on the top, long terms are on the bottom, long terms are at plus 25. Theoretically, when we start our short term fuel trims, um, should start to go negative to compensate. Turn this little bit, right here. holy crap. Get you guys out of the glare here. Yeah, we'll just deal with it. There we go. choppy right now. I should have pulled our uh, fuel status up here so as soon as this hits closed loop uh, that's when we're going to start to see a change here. I know if I kick back out we're going to miss it so we'll let it sit here and run for a little bit. Shouldn't take that long for it to uh, go into closed loop. Come on, little fella. There she goes. So it must have just went in a closed loop. Uh, our oxygen sensors would be reporting rich. That's kind of interesting. They both just went to minus 10. Tell you what, let's grab, uh, we'll grab some O2 data over right here. All right, it's back into open loop for some reason. So that's why our short term quit making a correction. Oxygen sensors are fixed, they're not oscillating. I don't know why it would have went back into open loop. Let me go give it a little throttle. Well, maybe we'll have to let it warm up a smidge. I don't believe the codes that it has set are going to prevent uh, closed loop operation. Should have had that pit up so we could have seen if it did switch to drop it to minus 10. Well, I tell you what, so that's, that's kind of peculiar. Let me just go back and see what codes it has stored in it right now. Oops. Well, that's our two original codes that we started with. I don't think that'll stop it from going in a closed loop. I could be wrong. Just letting it warm up there for a little bit. Let's see, so we should see our fuel trims here. Our short term should start to drop. Hopefully to what our long term is, uh, you know, kind of uh, make our total trim at or around zero. Just took it a while to hit closed loop there. 
but we can see so our total trim here is you know right around zero we let this sit, sit long enough you know as our as our long term goes back to zero we'll be in good shape but this is basically just one way to confirm that you have a fix prior to you know clearing the codes and we can see you know already after the vehicle's warmed up our total field trim here is right around zero it's just how we like it our front oxygen sensor is alive and well Yep, short term there is good. Same thing here. It's bank one. That O2 sensor is alive and well. Had me worried there, not going into closed loop. I thought they achieved closed loop status a little bit quicker than that. But now we can confidently go in, we can clear the codes, we know we got a fix, and uh, we don't have to worry about that. I was getting ready to wrap things up here, guys, and I came in and I noticed. The check engine light is already out. Of course, being a GM, the ABS and brake lights are on. But the uh, service engine soon light, it already ran its cycle right here. So we come back into the uh, codes menu. Just verify the bulb didn't blow. Uh, we go into uh, malfunction indicator light, service vehicle soon, message request, no codes. But technically we should still have the history codes here. And we do. So. That's pretty cool. Another way to uh, verify it, this one here. Uh, we should be able to just check the readiness monitor. It should have a full drive cycle done. Uh, so if he wants to get it inspected now, he can because we never had to clear the codes. Let's see here. Well, catalyst monitor is not complete. And that's the only one. So it must be, you know, it's been cleared when it was, uh, you know, the other shop and stuff. So basically it'll it'll run through inspection now uh, emissions wise, you know, I don't know about safety, but just wanted to share that with you. Alright guys, gonna wrap it up. That's it. Thanks for watching.